One of the greatest advantages that comes with using Inkscape is having the ability to create repeat patterns from simple shapes, objects, and even groups of objects. In fact, not only can you use vector objects to create patterns in Inkscape, you can even use text objects, clipped objects, and even JPEG images. And this tutorial will be showing you exactly how. So getting us started here, Inkscape makes the process of turning an object into a pattern incredibly easy. Let me show you what I mean using a simple shape just to get us started, and then I'll show you a working example of how you can actually use this in a practical sense. So I'm gonna start off with a star. I'm gonna use the stars and polygons tool. I'm gonna choose star instead of polygon, and I'm gonna use these input settings right here in case you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing. Now I'm just gonna click and drag on the canvas to create my star. I'm gonna move the cursor up like that, and I'm gonna hold control and, control and shift so that we have a nice upright star like that. Now I'm gonna make this green just to have a different color. Grab the selection tool and let me scale this down a little bit. I'm gonna hold control to lock the proportions and scale that down like that. And now to turn this object into a pattern, all you have to do is make sure you have it selected and go to object, pattern, and select object to pattern. Okay, now nothing visibly changes on your canvas, but that object will now be registered as a pattern in your fill and stroke menu. So let me show you how you can apply it now. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to click and drag on the canvas to create a simple rectangle like that. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna convert this to a path. So I'll go to path and select object to path. And now I wanna change the fill property of this rectangle from a solid color to a pattern. So to do that, we're gonna use the fill and stroke menu, which is located over here. And what we are looking for is under the fill tab, we have all of these different options for filling our object. We're looking for this option right here that says pattern when you hover your cursor over it. I'm gonna click on that. And if you use this drop down right here, you should see a list of all the different patterns that Inkscape has in it already. Now the patterns that you create, custom made patterns, are gonna be labeled as pattern with a series of random numbers after it. I don't know why this is the case, uh, but for whatever reason, Inkscape will name your patterns this. And as far as I know, there is no way to change the name of these patterns. So look for something titled pattern 3786 or whatever your numbers will be and select that. And uh, the, the, the pattern is actually applied there. You can't really see it though because it needs to be scaled down. So to scale this down, let's work on editing our pattern. I'm gonna grab the edit paths by nodes tool over here. And what we are looking for is we're looking for these handles. The first handle we're looking for is right here. This little, let me zoom in on this, this little crosshair. This X represents the location of the pattern relative to your object. Now, if I wanna move the location of the pattern, I could just click and drag this X like this to move the pattern within the object like that. You probably couldn't see exactly what happened there because the pattern's too large. I have to scale it down. So let's do that. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times. And I'm looking for some more handles out here. I don't know why, but for some reason, Inkscape puts these handles all the way out here in space sometimes. Uh, so you'll have to look around for them. And they're tiny too, they're hard to see. So we're looking for this square handle right here, which represents the size of the pattern. And then we're looking for this circular handle right here, which represents the rotation of the pattern. So let me take the square handle over here and scale this pattern down. I'm gonna hold control while I'm doing this. I'm bringing the square handle towards the center point, that crosshair, that X. And as I do this, I'm holding control to lock the aspect ratio. And as you can see, the pattern's getting smaller and we're seeing more of those stars in there. Let me zoom in on this so you can see this better. This scaling handle allows you to resize your pattern as needed, as you can see here. And if you wanna rotate your pattern, you can use this handle right here. Holding control will lock the rotation onto 15 degree angles, the same as it would with any other transformation that you would make in Inkscape. And again, if you wanna move the location of the pattern, you just have to click and drag this crosshair like that and move this around, as you can see here. And there you go, that is how you could take an object and turn it into a simple pattern. So let's go over a working example of how you would actually use this feature to create a pattern design. For an example here, I have this simple avocado graphic that I created. I'm just gonna click and drag over everything here and group all of these shapes together by going to object and selecting group. 
Now, the good thing about working with patterns in Inkscape is that it allows you to create patterns from virtually anything. It doesn't just have to be a single shape or a single object. It could be a grouping of objects. It could be a text object. It could be a masked or a clipped object. It could even be a JPEG image. So virtually anything you want in Inkscape could be turned into a pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this group of vector objects into a pattern. Now, when I create my pattern, I don't want all of the copies of this graphic to be touching each other side by side, as you can see here by the bounding box. What I wanna do is increase the size of that bounding box so that these objects have some spacing between them as they repeat in the pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this object. I'm gonna right click it and go to copy. And I'm going to create a rectangle like that. And I wanna make this rectangle the same size as my object. I'm gonna to go to edit, paste size, and I'm gonna choose paste size. Grab the selection tool, lower this beneath the object, click and drag over both of these so we have them both selected. And I'm gonna center this up on the vertical and horizontal axis using the alignment menu, which is located over here. It should open up on the right-hand side of your screen, and I want last selected chosen from this dropdown, and I'm just going to align this on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Okay, so now I'm going to click off of this to deselect everything. What I want to do now is take this object and add some padding around it so that we have some spacing going around this avocado graphic. So what I'm going to do up here where it says the width, 328, I'm just going to add 100 to each dimension. So I'm going to make this uh, 400 and I'm gonna make this over here, the height, 500. And now we have a little bit of padding there. Let me center that up, center that up. Let me see how that looks. Okay, we have some more pattern, but maybe not as much as I'd like. I'm gonna add another 100 to each dimension. So let me make this 500, and then I'll make this one 600. And let me try that again. Let me center that up. Okay, that looks a little better. So now I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna group these two objects together. I'll go to Object and select Group. And I'm just going to scale this down and put this off to the side. I'm going to select this, make sure I have it selected, go to Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. And let's say I want to use this as a background for like a thumbnail I'm going to design. The average thumbnail design is 1280 by 720 pixels. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, click and drag like that. And let me grab my selection tool. And I'm going to change the width and height of this to 1280 by 720 like that. And I want to resize my canvas to fit this object. So I'm going to select the object and press Control, Shift, and R on the keyboard. And it'll resize the document to fit that object. Now I'm going to take this object right here, go back to the Fill and Stroke menu, and I'm going to choose my pattern. And as you can see, there's the pattern. So what I want to do is grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and look for the placement. Put that in the center. Look for the scaling handle. Scale that down. Oops. There we go. And as you can see, we have our avocado pattern that we created using Inkscape. And I could even ro rotate this around a little bit just to give it a little bit of a design flair. There we go. OK, you got to make sure you're grabbing the correct crosshair here. There we go. And there we go. That is how you could take a simple object and turn it into a repeat pattern that you can use to fill objects however you'd like in Inkscape. Before I end this video, if you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time, and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that in the description of the video if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.